Joining us now to discuss and for the and to discuss what is the correct and patriotic response to this pollution is Bruce Lavelle, senior RNC media surrogate and former executive director of the National Diversity Coalition for Trump. Bruce, thank you so much for being with us. And I can't think of a better guest to have on tonight. And I know, by the way, that you've gone around and around with people uh, like Tiffany Cross on MSNBC. Yeah. You're one of those people who is brave enough to dive into the fire of opposition <laughs> media. And I commend you for that. But I want to ask you here, you know, as a human being, as an American citizen, as a black man, what do you think about these efforts from the Democrat Party and their media allies to demonize white <laughs> Americans? Oh my gosh, Steve. Hey, when you get done talking, and thanks for having me Monday night here. I, I just feel like having an altar call, brother, when you start preaching, man. I just want to pass the collection <laughs> plate because then you be bringing it on, brother Steve. Listen, you're absolutely right about <laughs> Tiffany Cross. I used to spend a lot of time on that fake news network, MSDNC. You were on CNN. I did a lot of CNN. And, you know, for me, Steve, I would have asked her, like, okay, so you just said there aren't, there aren't any black truckers, but you said you talked to a lot of them. Because, you know, me and you, Steve, we'd have been like, okay— can you bring them on the air like Newsmax would? You put them on the air and like and interview these people that you so-called talk to. But listen, this is scary though, Steve. We're talking about a major news network that runs a play like this and without with just come mm -hmm. out there and just say anything they want and just literally stir up more chaos and try to divide us. We're talking about a major news network. Well, not as major as Newsmax, but anyway. It is dangerous and toxic, but you're absolutely right. I don't know what it is, the fact that they are so scared of. I know what it is. Gee, we might have a really good idea that we want to cut the taxes, we want to cut the regs, we want to grow jobs. And most of all, they like to have the big bad boogeyman to scare the brown people away from voting for the orange man. Don't do it. That's what they're trying to do once again. But little do they know that there's a new, new, new movement on the horizon, and it's called the America First Movement, baby. It's coming to a theater near you, Brother Steve. Man, don't get me going <laughs> hey, tonight. Bruce. <laughs> you know, Steve makes a great point here, and I completely agree with him. But I have to say, do you think that Democrats just dislike anybody that's conservative? I mean, look at yourself. Look at somebody like Winsome Sears, like Candace Owens. I mean, <laughs> you guys are white supremacists as far as the Democrats are concerned. <laughs> yeah, and listen, it's funny you say that because remember, listen, what, what I said this before in you guys' show. Had the old, all the media been very fair, like Newsmax and OAN, and a few other these great networks out there these, that are trying to rise up, and literally allowed all the great messaging to come out evenly. You saw President Trump had 13% of the black vote, broke the record since Nixon and Lincoln. Y'all saw that 41% Latino vote, high turnout in the Asian uh, vote. Imagine what it had been if they'd have just let the message flow free for what it would be, because they know they have to control the narrative. They got to control. No, brown people don't come over here and have a new idea. We don't want you to come over here and have a new idea with us called personal responsibility, grow your own business, create your own generational wealth, which is a void in black America that President Trump uh, presented here in Atlanta. Brother Steve and Sister Jen down here in Atlanta a half a trillion dollars worth of resources called the Platinum Plan, and everybody said, it's racist. And look what they have now. Look what's going on now. What vaccine mandates that you're putting in New York that's literally oppressing brown people across America and coming up with all these crazy, heinous policies that's killing the country. Man, y'all got my blood pressure up Bruce. tonight. <laughs> hey, you, you should have your blood pressure elevated about important topics like this. Absolutely. Bruce, I want to ask you about this aspect, too. Even outside of the racial aspect, I, I think race is a key part of it. And I truly do believe that the Democratic Party hates white people and, and wants to spread that hate. Uh, but even setting the racial aspect aside for a moment, um, I think there is such a condescension to working class people here as well. And I think that the ruling class of this country has gotten very comfortable in punching down and doing it in front of us without any shame. And what I mean by that, for instance, is somebody like Tiffany Cross, who is probably very well paid, who is broadcasting, I'm guessing, from her studio at 30, 30 Rock in Manhattan. She's fine to punch down on people she views as these knuckle-dragging truck drivers. Uh, there's, there's a lot of that. And I don't want to only pick on her. She deserves to be picked on, but not only her. There's a lot of it going on out there. I want to bring up a tweet that I also noticed over the weekend that got me pretty riled up, and it was of Rachel Bidikoffer. And she is a fairly well-known pollster out there. She's also on the board of the 
Lincoln Project, and I have no love loss for the Lincoln Project. And oh. she's literally making fun here. She's tweeting somebody else's tweet, as you can see there on the screen, and she's making fun of it. It's clearly, you know, a, a Trump partisan who's got the Trump flags, American flag out front, appears to have a pretty modest, old, inexpensive car. She said, Republican voter who can't even afford a car from this century. So these blue check political experts, they mock Trump supporters, Bruce Lavelle, for not owning an expensive enough car. Uh, I don't think this is a one-off. I don't think Tiffany Cross is a one-off. I think this is the attitude that the ruling class takes toward working class Americans. Your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are, hey, I got an old truck too, Steve. <laughs> listen, don't, they don't talk about me. But listen, a lot of my friends and colleagues, yeah, they drive older vehicles, but guess what? We got mad cash up in the bank, baby. That's right. We got big money in the bank. So maybe they need to look a little deeper with that. But then once again, here we go again, Steve. This is a constant, constant narrative that the left tries to conquer and divide, whether it be a social class, whether it be a race, as you said earlier in the segment. It's a constant division. And it's kind of scary. Think about the, the senior producer, MSNBC, allowing you have you have a show where you have your top host or whatever host you want to call her, to go on there and spew this type of mess out here and say these kind of hateful, divisive things and call yourself diversity and inclusion here at our network. We have all types. And, and then to have this spew out there, it is so deadly dangerous. And you know, the sad thing about it is, is that at the end of the day, that what is going to happen, that's right, right here on Monday night, you're going to look up one day and what? Newsmax is already but way up here at the top right here. A lot of moderates and Democrats are going to start watching these type of shows like, listen, can we just get the news? So, yeah, well, another person's loss will be a gain for someone else. I've always said that. Look at Getter. Yeah. Look at Trump's uh, social media coming out February 2022. You cancel us. We open up our business. We get bigger. We get stronger. We get faster. So keep keep well, running your you mouth. It makes it more right the, the country is shifting right, right? This, this strategy that the Democrats had, it worked for a little while, and now it's really fading with voters. I want to point out a headline. This is from The Intercept. It says, it's not just white people. Democrats are losing normal voters of all races. It says, Democrats fear they are losing white swing voters over racial politics. These three studies suggest that the party's elite culture may be the real problem. Your thoughts? Well, you know, the thought is, is that, you know, finally, you know, I, I would say, listen, let, let me just give some more credit to President Donald John Trump. I know he's watching because I, I text him, hey, hey, brother, watch this show. It's going to be fun. Is that when, when Steve and I, a lot of the folks around the networks use the term America first, that's not a, that's not a Trump whistle or, or any type of uh, whistle. It's a whistle for all Americans to come back by America, made in America, put faith and confidence back in our great republic. That's what this whistle is about. That's what this call is about. And listen. If it's going to bring independents and Democrats over to say, hey, hmm, I like that America First thing. It sounds really good. Well, come on down. You're the next contestant on America First. We'll take it. So whatever it is, where we have to pitch it and sell it to get people come on over here to this great movement called America First, to where we look out in these oceans and we see those ships have turned back around because we are manufacturing those products here in the U.S. We are making those TVs, the RCAs and the Zeniths that me and Steve grew up with. You remember that, Steve? The Zenith and the RCAs, those <laughs> made in America products. That's who we are as America. And that's what we're going to, that's what this movement's all about. And that's who we're bringing on board, Democrats, independents, whoever they are. And that is what the left is concerned about and scared to death. And some rhinos because, oh, we right. need control. <laughs> Bruce, we always love having you here. You always bring the energy live and unfiltered. Bruce Lavelle, thanks for joining us, my friend. Yeah, happy Monday. Thanks for having me. Bless happy you guys. Happy Monday. <laughs>